In this class we're going to look at corporate social responsibility. Now this is defined as an obligation beyond that required by the law and economics for a firm to pursue long-term goals that are good for society. So CRS, CSR I should say, corporate social responsibility is the continuing commitment by business to um, behave ethically, behave correctly. So the, there is an onus on the business to do the right thing and to contribute to economic developments so as to improve the quality of life of the workforce and their families, the local community and society at large. So in summary, corporate social responsibility is about how a company manages its business process to produce an overall positive impact on society. So corporate social, corporate social responsibility means conducting business in an ethical way and in the interest of the wider community. It means responding positively to emerging societal priorities and expectations. For example, when society is concerned about global warming, then the firm should show some sort of leadership or some sort of concern in addressing this. It should uh, make sure that its own processes are efficient and that workers and society know it's behaving properly. So it should, it should be responsive to the concerns of the society and of the wider community. It should be responsive in a sense of doing something. It should be acting properly and seen to be acting properly. It has a willingness to act ahead and it should have a willingness to act ahead of regulatory confrontation. It shouldn't wait for the government to force it to behave properly. It should do it automatically. It should do it before force is applied. To be truly ethical, to be truly good, we don't need force. We do it because it is the right thing to do. And the company has to balance the shareholders' interest against the interest of the wider community. Clearly the shareholders require profits, otherwise the business won't exist. But the wider community also have to be catered for, and some of the profits might have to be retained and used to improve training for the workforce, or better working conditions, or um, environmental meeting environmental standards and regulations. So it's a balance between what the shareholders get and what the wider community gets. All of that could be, I suppose, summarized as saying the company should be a good citizen in the community. Now, the relationship between corporate social responsibility and business ethics. Well, corporate social responsibility and business ethics are linked. Both concerns, uh, both concepts concern values objectives and decisions that are based on something other than the pursuit of profit. So CSR and business ethics are looking at something other than profit. They're looking at other issues, not just the profit issue. Socially responsible firms must act ethically. Now the difference between CSR and ethics well, ethics is concerned with individual actions which can be assessed as right or wrong by reference to moral principles. So we can see ethics as applied to individuals and we can say the individual is right or wrong according to some moral standard or some moral position we take. So we say people are good or bad or right or wrong according to that. Corporate social responsibility is about the organization's obligations to all its stakeholders and not just the shareholders. So all the stakeholders 
their aspirations and their concerns must to some extent be addressed or recognised at least by the organisation. There are four dimensions of corporate responsibility. Ec economic one. Um, the company must earn a profit. If it doesn't earn a profit it won't exist. So there is a dimension. There's a legal one. The responsibility to comply with the law. Society codifies what is right and what is wrong. It writes down what is right and what is wrong and it gets us to recognize what is right and what is wrong in the legal system and to act accordingly. So the firm must comply with the law. Ethically, it's not just acting for profit but doing what is right. It's, it's doing what is right and what's just and what is fair it is not just generating profits and there should be some element of voluntary and philanthropic uh, behavior promoting human welfare and goodwill so it's it's helping people it's promoting people and welfare which is the the end game that's what we're we're talking about when we are concerned with corporate social responsibility. It, it's helping the workforce, it's helping the community. Being a good corporate citizen, uh, contributing to community and also to the quality of life of the people in the community and in society in general. So, social responsibility, well there, there is a debate not all business organizations behave in a socially responsible manner. Um, some make the profit and and get out. Some are criticized for just focusing entirely upon profits. Should the business organizations be concerned about social issues and problems? I mean, is it not the responsibility of the business to make a profit and that is it? If there are wider issues, they should be addressed by the society. That's, that's one position that's taken. Is it the obligation of companies to look after society as well? Or should it just make a profit and uh, pay, pay dividends to the shareholders and salaries to the managers and good salaries to the workers? Should they also be forced or, or should they have a responsibility for looking after the environment? There are two schools of thought on the issue. The free market view. Um, the job of business is to create wealth with the interests of the shareholders as the guiding principle. So the free market view is make the profit and forget everything else. It is the job of society and of the, the lawmakers to make sure that society is working properly. Now that's one, one particular view. The second view is the corporate social responsibility view, which businesses should be concerned with social issues. Businesses should make a profit, but also spend some of the profits on social issues. The free market view. Well, the role of business is to create wealth by providing goods and services to increase its profits and to engage in open and free competition without deception or fraud that's the that's one view that's the free market view uh, that was the view put forward by a very famous Nobel Prize winner in economics Milton Friedman and there are many people from different types of economics from, from different persuasions within the economics uh, school to suggest that it's got its supporters for example the Austrian economists would say that uh, the, the job of business to make a profit, survive, compete and there's nothing in there about looking after society or looking after the community so the free market view is the business looks after itself so the role of the business is to create wealth by providing goods and services and to increase profit engage in open and free competition without deception or fraud um, Engaging in free and open competition uh, may require 
lawmakers to be involved because competition sometimes is not free and it's not open and there may be an issue there likewise there's a tendency sometimes for, for companies to engage in deception and fraud so perhaps the free market view has got many problems and perhaps it does need external intervention to to keep the business on the straight and narrow so if you look at the the view the, the Friedman view to create wealth nobody would disagree with that that is what companies do increases profits yes increase the profits be efficient engage in free and open competition that's what it should do but if it has a chance it'll become a monopoly perhaps increase the price in the local area and deception and fraud well, there have been many examples of this in corporate history so a summary of this managers um, who have been put in charge of a business have no right to give away the money of the owners that's the view the managers run the business on behalf of the shareholders the shareholders are not perhaps involved on a day-to-day -day basis and therefore the managers have no right to give away the shareholders money so there would be no corporate social responsibility under this view the responsibility of the managers is to give the profits to the shareholders and the managers are implied to generate wealth for the shareholders not to give it away Um, it's also argued that free markets and capitalism have led to economic and social development improvements in health and in longevity the the benefits that we see around us have come to us through capitalism that's the argument and therefore why kill it um, why make it difficult it's the free market view also to attract quality workers it's necessary to offer good pay and conditions and this leads to a, um, a rise in standards of living and wealth creation so people do benefit from capitalism that's the argument um, it's possible to promote yourself within the organization through promotion and hard work and through talent and individuals benefit from this consumers get the product that they're after because the product is sold cheaply and efficiently on the market that's the view so there's no onus on the company to provide other facilities or to to look after the environment it's just the onus on the on the the business is to to make a profit so the free markets contribute to effective management of scarce resources it's the the managers look after the scarce resources and put them out uh, into the marketplace and generate profits and there is nothing there about looking after the community sometimes markets do fail and um, some regulation is necessary to redress the balance Um, regulation should be kept to a minimum however since regulation, uh, regulation kills initiative and creates barriers to market entry so it's viewed by the free market people that regulation should be at a minimum so as not to kill off initiatives now the free market case against corporate social responsibility well uh, the only social responsibility of business is to create shareholder wealth efficient use of resources will be reduced if the businesses are restricted in how they can produce the pursuit of social goals lead businesses away from their primary purpose the primary purpose of the business it's argued is to make a profit not to look after the community or to look after society and corporate management cannot decide what is in the social interest anyway because corporate management is too busy looking after the product 
looking after the business, looking after production, distribution, marketing, sales, blah, 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 blah. So, therefore, it finds it difficult to find out what is the social interest and who knows what the social interest is, so it can't promote it. So it's wrong to ask businesses to do that. And if it did do it, it would pass on the cost to the consumers anyway. It would simply increase the cost of the business, which would be reflected in higher prices later on in the marketplace. So, corporate social responsibility, it said, reduces economic efficiency and profits. Directors have a legal ob obligation to manage the company in the interest of shareholders, not for other stakeholders. So, corporate social responsibility would lead to inefficiency and less profit, and it's moving the obligation from the satisfying the shareholders, the owners of the business, to other stakeholders, people who do not own the business. So it's seen that seemed to be wrong by the free market um, proponents. Corporate social responsibility behaviour imposes additional costs which reduce competitiveness. Eventually companies overseas or elsewhere will will outcompete the companies who are trying to be nice. And therefore those companies will close down and there'll be a loss of jobs and people will be worse off in the long run. And it places unwelcome responsibilities on businesses rather than on governments or individuals. Perhaps the proper place to have corporate social responsibility or have care for the environment or for the community and so on is with governments or, or individuals, not with companies. Companies are there to make products and sell products. So the, the free market case is very strong against corporate social responsibility. Now, let's turn over and look at the corporate social responsibility view. Well, businesses don't have uh, an, unquestioned, an unquestioned right to operate in society. Businesses are in society because society allows them to be there. And therefore, they have got a responsibility to look after the society. Those managing businesses should recognise that they depend on society. We all depend on society in some way, but they depend on society and it's, it's necessary to put something back. Of course, the free market people would say, well, they are putting something back in the form of taxation. But this view takes it, you don't, you don't just pay the tax, but you also put something back in terms of your behaviour, your ethical stance towards, um, towards the community and towards society in general. Business rely on inputs from society and on socially created institutions. Uh, we do look for inputs from society. The most obvious one from people. People have to go to schools and the schools have to educate the people and, and so on. So there are inputs into the business from society education for example, health and so on. So therefore the business should do something to put something back. Not just pay its tax but behave ethically as well. And it's argued that there is a, a social contract between business and society because each should recognize each other and the two of them should um, behave in a way that supports each other. That's the view of the corporate social responsibility school. Now the stakeholder theory, well the theory suggests that business organizations have responsibility to various groups in society, the internal and external sh uh, stakeholders and not just the owners or the shareholders. So this view is that the organization has got an obligation to the internal and external stakeholders, to the to the community, to the society, internally to the workers and even to, to some of the, the managers themselves. So the business has got an obligation there. The responsibility includes a responsibility for the natural environment. Decisions should be taken in the wider interest, not just in the narrow shareholder interest. So 
whatever decisions the company takes it should integrate considerations of the community, society, of people and perhaps people who are not necessarily working for the business people on the outside who would be affected by the business's behaviour Now let's look at some arguments for social, socially responsible behaviour First of all, it's the right thing to do Simple Second, it improves the firm's public image so it's good for the firm, it's good for the company it's necessary in order to avoid excessive regulation. If, if the companies do it without the regulation, without the laws in place, the laws won't come into place. They're unnecessary. The people are doing it anyway. They're looking after the community and society and the environment. And they're not being forced to do it. So you don't need the laws. It can be profitable. If, um, if companies are behaving responsibly, customers like the companies and com uh, customers will therefore discriminate in the marketplace in favour of the products of the companies who are behaving responsibly so it can be profitable um, and a better social environment benefits the firm if, if people are if the environment is bad if, if if there's social unrest or if there's antisocial behaviour it affects the firm the same as it affects everybody else so an improved social environment benefits the firm benefits the company and it will attract investors the company that is seen to be behaving properly and good is attractive to investors they'll want to become involved and the employees will be more motivated they don't think of the company as greedy taking all the profits and and leaving it and, and leaving bad conditions behind to see the the company as responsible they're proud of their company they're proud of the reputation and of its standing within the community so they're more motivated to to work for the company and it can also correct social problems that are caused by business um, Businesses can create pollution, or they can they can cause um, problems with the with the environment. And companies that are acting responsibly can can help to fix it. Can help to fix whatever perhaps even other companies are doing badly. Some of the companies behaving badly. Some companies behaving good. Can fix the bad. And so it's again a very positive image for the business which takes us to this idea of what we call enlightened self-interest um, this is the practice of acting in a way that is costly and perhaps inconvenient at the present but which is believed to be in one's best long-term interests enlightened self-interest means it's going to be costly it's a problem it's it's going to sap up resources but in the long term you benefit from it you benefit by enhanced reputation by uh, people looking at the business and congratulating the business for its efforts in the past and therefore you'll get more sales more sales more reputation the government will be more sympathetic perhaps as well so there are long-term benefits from acting in this way Anita Roderick founder of the body shop she summarized enlightened self, self interest as being good is good for business so if you're good it's good for business now corporate social responsibility can benefit uh, the firm in several ways it can help attract and retain good staff because people want to work for that business they see it as a good business, it's, it's ethical, it's, it's a proper business, it's a caring business. It can attract green and ethical investment. People want to invest in that business, they want to be associated with the business, people want to support the business. So it enjoys a good reputation. It, it attracts ethically conscious customers, 
customers who who say this business is supporting the community it's doing the right thing it's it's not destroying the environment it's it's been responsible and therefore the customers like it and it could do it could actually lead to a reduction in cost through recycling it could by by engaging in the the whole green agenda perhaps cut its own costs by being more in more efficient in the use of energy and recycling its its products in a way that perhaps cuts its own costs um it differentiates the firm from its competitor and can be a source of competitive advantage if other firms are not doing it and one firm is that firm stands out and customers see that firm as standing out so does the community, so does the government. Everyone sees the good firm standing out and that should give it a, um, a competitive advantage. And if it has got a competitive advantage that can lead to increased profitability in the long run. So in this class we've looked at the free argument, sorry, the free market view, the free free market argument in, in against corporate social responsibility and we've looked at the case for corporate social responsibility. So there are two sides that need to be considered when we when we talk about corporate social responsibility, the for and against. Okay that concludes this class. Thank you for watching.